I'm Jared, and this is going to be a short introduction on how to get started with Kuali. Kuali is a desktop app that allows you to automatically detect accessibility issues on web pages. To get started, I'm going to first show you in each operating system how to install Kuali. So on Windows, you just click the big download button. It'll download a zip file. You can double click the zip file and drag out the folder to your desktop or wherever. Um, if you'd like to manually install this on your machine, you can drag it to your program files folder in C program files. Go into the folder and you'll find the quality.exe file. If you right click and drag, you can create a shortcut, rename it so you get rid of that end part there, and you can drag this to your desktop or you can drag it to your start menu and uh, keep it somewhere listed in your start menu on your desktop. Um, you can also pin it to the taskbar if you use it often. So. Now that it's installed, we can delete the zip file and it's ready to go. Um, before we move on, let's show you how to do the same thing in each operating system. In Linux, you go to the website, click on the big download button. When the zip file finishes downloading, double click on it. You can drag out the folder to your desktop or wherever you like. Once that finishes unzipping, It'll appear on the desktop. You can close that folder. You can delete this zip file. Open this up and there'll be a Kuali executable you can double click on and it'll pop right up. On OS X, you go to the website, you click on the big download button. When the zip file finishes downloading, double click on it. It will extract the, uh, the application from the zip. You can then drag this to your applications folder. And now you'll have Kuali installed and that's all there is to it. Um, if you have applications pinned in your dock, you can always access Kuali right there, or you can pin them at the bottom if you use them pretty often. And they'll pop right up. Okay, now that we have it installed, I'm going to minimize this and open up Kuali. The first thing you'll see is a URL bar. This is where you'd paste in your website, any page on the internet you like, and it will uh, be able to check it for accessibility issues. And you can even put in a local host if you are um, developing a website locally. Uh, after that, you have the file name for uh, the report that gets generated. Um, this will be created automatically, but you can of course manually type in whatever you want for the report name. Um, you'll have an output folder if you'd like to put this in a reports uh, folder on your computer, or you can choose uh, the default here, which is your desktop. There's a standards format dropdown where you can choose which standard. So if you are working on a uh, website for the US government, a federal website, then you are legally required to be in compliance with the section 508 uh, guidelines. Um, otherwise, uh, most people stick with the WCAG2 double A. Um, the single A is very loose the AAA is very strict, but most sites will try to comply with AA. And then of course you can choose what type of report you want to generate, um, HTML, CSV, JSON, Markdown, or XML. After that you have this uh, image accessibility section which is completely optional, so we're going to skip that for right now and we're just going to run um, google.com with WCAG2 AA and generate HTML format. So click run and you'll see this cube spin and that's telling you that an invisible browser was loaded up in the background. It went to the web page and it checked it for accessibility issues and then it generated this report here. So I'm going to double click on the report on the desktop and we'll see that google.com has zero errors. So that's actually really good. So there are no WCAG2 AA errors found. So that's great. Um, I'm gonna rerun this again with AAA so we can see some errors show up. And then refresh the page. And now we see that there are three errors using WCAG to AAA. Um, these all have to do with a level of contrast for certain colors. And you'll see that um, it actually tells you the line of, uh, of code on the page that is the problem, where that code is located at in the DOM, um, in, in some cases, leave and give you suggestions and it will say, hey, we found that your contrast ratio for the text color versus its background color was 5.37 to 1. 
which is actually really good. Um, for WCAG2 AA, it should be above 4.5, but for AAA, it wants it at 7 to 1. So in this case, it's actually much better than AA, but doesn't quite meet AAA standards. So it tells you, hey, if you change it to this exact value, that will get you up to a 7 to 1 ratio. So it'll actually help you out in those cases. Um, however, uh, due to how strict AAA is, you may find that the colors it suggests may radically change what your design looks like. So if you are attempting to go with the strictest of modes, you should be very prepared to change your designs a lot um, so that they will look better and still meet this criteria. But again, almost everyone uses double uh, A. So I would recommend if you're new to this stuff, stick with double A and try to fix um, all of the errors that come back from it. Um, and then look through all the warnings and see if there's anything that it's found that you can fix. And then the notices are things where um, the automated system can't detect if your intent from your code is to do something one way or to do it another way. And based off of the intent, um, you could potentially have a problem or it could be perfectly fine. So for example, if you are using tables to display data, then you should have some type of a summary or a caption or something like that that explains the purpose of the table to someone who is visually impaired. But if you're using a table as a means to uh, control the position of elements on a page, you're using the table for layout purposes, then uh, there's no need to add in a summary or uh, a caption because uh, that table is meant to be invisible to um, to people who are looking at the page. So stuff like that would show up under notices where it would give you um, some potential issues that you could resolve if you are using your code in one way versus another. So um, uh, you can also hide and show the errors and the warnings and the notices on the page. So you can just show the warnings or just the errors. Um, that's what these buttons up here do. The report that is generated is completely self-contained. So all of the styling is built into the uh, the file that is created here, along within the JavaScript that allows these buttons to be clickable. So all of that's built right into the file. The only thing that is not is the uh, web font. So if you wanted to send this to someone else, it should work without any issues if you just email it to them. Um, or if you archive this later and want to look at it offline, it will load without any problems. So just have a different font. Um, and that's it. So this is the HTML uh, report. Obviously, um, these other formats don't have any styling or interactivity involved with them. CSV, JSON, Markdown, and XML. Um, so uh, let's get into this optional section here, the image accessibility. I'm gonna change this to a different website. And you'll notice that as I type, the file name will be updated. There we go. Um, the file name automatically removes lots of special characters and replaces them with spaces. So um, just to be aware of how that works. So I'm gonna try out this other website. Oops, scout-app.io. So I'm gonna go to this website um, and try this section down here. So in my browser, let's go to scout app. And what this optional section does is it allows you to um, gather some information about the images on a page and their alt text. So Pali will be able to detect if an image does or does not have alt text, but it won't be able to know if that alt text is actually descriptive. I've seen many websites where an image has alt text and all it says is widget. And that's not very useful to someone who can't see that image. So, um, the only way to be able to um, verify if an image is has descriptive alt text is to have an actual human um, check and tell whether or not that's descriptive. And so that's what this section lets us do. I'm gonna also grab some other statistics and we'll go over that in a minute. But um, before we go into this, uh, the what this tells you to do is click the button to copy the console code. So I'll do that. And we see that little alert pop up at the bottom that says copy to clipboard. Um, and then it tells you to paste this code in your browser's console and press enter. And then it will give you code back that you can paste into this box. 
So um, you may be wondering, why do you have to do this? Um, why do you have to manually copy this code and paste it in your browser and then bring that stuff back into the application? Although when you click run, we do spin up a browser in the background that goes to the website and it could grab all of the same information that you are doing here. Um, what it can't do is uh, interact with the page uh, in a meaningful way that's automated with, um, you know, quality is meant to be a general purpose tool. So it's meant to work on every website. So it would have no way of knowing how to interact with every possible website. So uh, what this does here, I'm gonna copy this. There is a feature in web design and web development called lazy loading, where as you scroll down a page, there are images in the page that haven't loaded yet until you scroll down to them. And once you hit a certain point on the screen, it'll start loading those images. Or you'll have something like this, like a uh, carousel that lists all of the, um, the potential images that can be shown here. And it doesn't actually load any of them until you click on the box. And then it will attempt to load that image. Um, or you can uh, press the arrow to go through these. And I'm loading all these into the background. So uh, this is allowing us to go through and interact with the page and scroll to the bottom, go all the way to the bottom and ensure that everything loads, all of the images on the page are gonna download, and also to interact with things so that um, it will actually load in the images. So I'm going to click through this one here, it'll load up all four of the images here, whereas before it would have only just loaded the first one. And then down here, there's about 20 or so, so I'm not gonna click through these, uh, all of them. We're gonna leave a bunch here so you can see what happens when we don't do that. So um, that's why you have to do this part manually is so that you can interact with the page and ensure that all of the images in the page load. So once you've done that, once you've interacted with the page, then you click this button to copy the console. You paste this in your browser's console and press enter. So to do that on the page, you can right click anywhere and go to inspect. And this works in all browsers. And this will pop up these dev tools in that browser. Then you can go over to the console. It should be one of the tabs there and you can paste in that code. Some browsers may give you a security warning that says you have to type in allow paste or something like that. Um, and that's just to prevent people from uh, pasting code into the browser that could be dangerous. So this is a, a very simple code. All it does is look through the page and find all images and their alt text. Uh, so I'm going to hit enter and it will do that and it will return to me a list of all the images on the page and their alt text. And you'll see in here that there is a source, this is the actual image, and then it has this alt text next to it. And if you look down here towards the bottom, there'll be some sources that don't have a, in a, an actual location for the image because this image never loaded because it's one of those ones that we didn't click all the way through on. And, but we'll still see the alt text for it. So. Um, we'll go into what that means in a second and what all this code means. But um, basically we pasted in that code, hit enter, and it has returned the stuff and it should have copied it for us. Again, in some browsers for security purposes, they may prevent automatically copying it and you'll have to manually select this and copy it yourself by hitting control C or command C. Um, at the bottom here, uh, you'll see the above code has been copied to your clipboard. You may see another line after that that says prevented copying to clipboard if it's one of those browsers. So um, if that's the case, just select it and copy it manually. But once you have this, this chunk of code here in your clipboard, you can come back to Kuali. You can right click and paste and it will go right in there. So uh, again, you click the copy button, you come over here, you run it, it will copy stuff for you and you come over and you paste that stuff in. And that's all there is to it. So a little, a few manual steps and then we'll click run and this will have this little uh, spinner here. This will load up. It's showing you um, that it's downloading all of the images on the page. I'm gonna make this real big so we can see it. And you'll notice that in this modal, it asks you, is the text under the image descriptive? So here's the image. I'm gonna hover over it and I'll see it turns to the black background uh, and it says, Scout App 2 logo featuring Scout the Puppy. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty descriptive. This is the Windows logo and it has windows under it. Yep, okay. Ubuntu, Zorin, that's the Zorin logo. There's OS X, that's the Apple logo. Um, first time user experience, Windows 7. So that shows me a screenshot of the first time user experience on Windows 7. Yep, that's descriptive. So 
I'm going to go through here and just click yes on all of these. And then we get down to this section where we had um, a bunch of images that we didn't click through, so it never got the, uh, the image. But it still knew about the alt text, so these images never got lazy loaded. So um, we can look in here and see um, th these are all themes on the page. So this is the Cerulean theme on Windows 7, this is the classic theme, Cosmo, Cyborg, Darkly, Flatly, so on. So these are all descriptive names that in the context of the page would uh, would make sense. So I'm gonna click yes on all of those. And then down here, these are all good too, but just for fun, I'm going to click no on these last few here. Now you'll notice that as you're going through and clicking the images uh, as yes or no, it will give it a green or uh, green or orange background for yes or no, so that in case you click the wrong thing, you can go back and change it. Um, and if there are any images that have a, uh, a white background, uh, or it's a transparent background with a white image that's hard to see on this white background, you can hover over it and it will give it a black background so you can more easily see the image before saying yes or no. Okay, so we've gone through and clicked yes on all of these. These last ones are still descriptive, but just for uh, the sake of, uh, of demonstration, I'm gonna say no on the last four here and just click continue and we'll get that cube again which means it's going to that website and it's running so I'm gonna minimize this and we're going to open up this file now in the browser so this is the, the latest report and just like before we'll make this big you can see that there are errors and warnings and notices on the page um, but there's also at the very top this image accessibility box which wasn't there the last time and that is what you get if you do this optional section here and you click through that modal of all of the yes no's. Um, it gives you this box here. So in here, it'll tell you that 91% of images on the page had descriptive alt text. So remember when we said uh, no on the last four images? Well, that meant that 43 out of 47 were, were good and the last four that we said no to um, didn't have descriptive alt text. So it counted as 91% and it gave us a little X. Um, next, it says 100% of alts were under 100 characters. So that means of all of the alt text that we reviewed, they were all under 100 characters. Um, and that will also mean um, images that don't have alt text. But uh, this, um, this is something that you probably don't need to worry about. Um, older mobile phones, some older screen reading devices um, may have issues with really long alt text. It may crop it off after a while or some older browsers, but this is kind of a fringe case. You don't really need to worry about this. Um, however, uh, it is recommended that if you have a lot of additional alternative text that you link that on a separate page um, or you put that content visible on the page to describe stuff. Uh, so it's not hidden in the alt. Um, next, 100% of images were under 100 kilobytes in size. So 47 out of 47 were under 100 kilobytes, so that's good. Um, and that's something to be aware of. Um, the, uh, the, there are some um, older feature phones or mobile phones. There's people who are on slower networks where very large images uh, can limit them accessing your page. So uh, that's why this is here. Also, um, if you happen to upload a really, really big image that should have been resized down for web, then this will help to point that out to you. So if you see that 46 out of 47 images were under there, then it tells you, oh, there's one image that's above this file size. I wasn't expecting that. I can look into that and look at my images and see Oh yeah, there's one that's gigantic. Let me resize it down. Um, then 72% of images loaded with a total image payload of 890.9 kilobytes. So again, this is a way of showing you the total payload on the image of the of the website. Um, the the website we just looked at had a, a lot of screenshots, so um, I think that that makes sense for it to be around this size. But if you're seeing something. Um, where this number is much higher than you expected, then again, this is just meant to be a red flag. So you'll you'll see this and say, oh, let me go and fix that. Um, and then you'll notice that uh, some of the images didn't load. So it 
said 34 out of 47 and it gave us a 72 percent so something else to be aware of um, just to point out hey there was a problem loading some images on your site so maybe those images um, don't exist on the server anymore and you have some bad links or maybe there's some network connectivity issues or something else that's preventing the uh, the images from from loading so that's what that section right here does uh, again completely optional uh, if you do fill this out and you go through that all those steps then uh, you can get this data that's here in the report in the HTML the JSON um, the markdown and the XML uh, report so any of those reports you'll get it CSV uh, it won't do so it'll hide it for you automatically um, because the data that is returned for this information down below the errors warnings and notices um, you can't really structure data to in a CSV to show you all this information and then also all of this information it's two different sets and kinds of data so you can't really combine those two together um, but we can display that information in HTML, JSON, um, Markdown, and XML. So uh, that is Kowali. It is free. It is open source. Um, if you find any bugs in it or you have any requests for features or you'd like to contribute and make it better, then you can go to the website, um, which if you click on the About button, there's a link right here. You can go to the website and, uh, and uh, tell us, you know, what bugs you found or what ideas you have. There's a little button up here to go to the GitHub page and you can go to the issues and add new issues to it. So for some feature request or something, just click new issue. And then if you have a GitHub account, you can log in, otherwise you can create one. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching.